What I'd like to address now is how I sort of got that motor mount. So um, the piece of wood that the motor sits on on the bottom, how I got that to be the exact shape. I basically got one of these tools. Um, they're just like reg shaped tools that you can sort of uh, put on a, on a surface, sort of like that. And if you just push them hard enough, they give you the profile of the surface, a very rough guide. And so basically I had this tool and I stuck it in the cavity there. And when you insert it, just like we did right here with that surface, um, it gives you that, that, that curvature. And this is what like people use for crown molding and whatnot. You can get these off of Amazon. And once I had that, then I created a mold which looked something like that. And that was a half mold and I test fit it back into the fuselage and made sure that I got the height that I wanted. So these tip points. And once I had that, then it was just an issue of uh, doing the same process further back into uh, in the fuselage. The profile of the inner workings of this tube actually changed because the jet sort of tapers further back down. So you need to get a shape right at the front section and then right at the back section. So that's what I did. And that is how I was able to create the wooden mount that I'm gonna show in the video. Video. Then the last thing is how do I mount uh, that motor actually onto the wooden mount? Well, once I figured out with the profile and I built my motor mount and test fit it, then I used air epoxy, so um, that is the E9640 or 9460, that's the, the gray stuff that you're seeing there to secure that in place. Okay. So once I had the motor mount in place, the next question was figuring out where to drill these two holes because these are the access holes that go to the two screws that secure the motor to the mount. So I have these holes on both sides of the fuselage. You can see there's a second set. And I preferred the holes rather than cutting like an access hatch um, in here just because I did not want to weaken the fuselage at all in this section. So that's the, the holes in there. Of the setup this is what we've got pretty clean your 12s packs sit right there stick out the back your ESC wiring is fairly clean and that's the brain the brawn of it um, that's the jet fan 12s I built this board to support the ESC and then in the back we've got Afterburner, lights on the bottom, pretty sweet. The jet has only one set of batteries, that's the 12S pack um, that powers this jet. And then from that I have stepped down uh, to get the voltages to power my servos and what. So in here we have two regulators. Um, so this guy is a YPG regulator. But what this guy does is it steps down the 12S power. Let's see if I can show that. So there's wiring going all the way to this plug, which is a 12S. And this steps the 12S power down to, um, I believe it's nine volts or 9.5 volts. And that runs the gear so that runs the 
uh, Zykoi controller here for the gear and for the brakes. So the second regulator is that 18 amp ZTW Beck. And that regulator also runs off of um, the 12 volt power, uh, not 12 volt, 12 S power, so the 50 volt power, and steps down to create the uh, 8 volts that I need to run the uh, smooth flight unit that's in here. And so that smooth flight unit, um, you can see there's two plugs. So there's one right here, and there's a second connection right here. So both of those split off of that regulator and power the smooth flight unit um, at um, uh, 8 volts. So there's really no extra batteries required. Now, there is one more regulator, and I don't know if I can show this, and that is, let's see, down here. Um, so this green uh, sort of bulgy thing, that is a third regulator and a LED controller that powers the afterburner light that you can see in there. So that LED is powered by that system. And what that is, is essentially just a step-up regulator. So basically, uh, the back that powers uh, this smooth flight unit puts out 8 volts. From that back, I hook up this guy, and that steps it up to 12 volts, and then that is used to run uh, the afterburner uh, lights. Now, you can see on this side right here, there is my light controller, which is just the GT Power uh, light controller module, which I added. And that guy runs off of just one of the servo channels on the smooth flight unit. So essentially that's running at 8 volts and is being used to power all the, um, the LEDs. You can see wiring was pretty clean and then snakeskin just to prevent it from chafing and so that it can go through all of these grooves correctly uh, without me having to worry about you know any wires getting cut or whatnot. Uh, what else is here? Obviously we have the, the ESC, the uh, um, Hobby, hobby wing fly fun and it's, it's, a, it's a decent ESC and that's used to power the motor but other than that nothing more too complicated these are the wires that uh, go from sort of from the light controller to the wing lights that I used to power the, those LEDs um, and let's see you can see I'm using an orange RX receiver so that's the one receiver is here one satellite uh, is in the nose. Let's see if I can show that really quickly. So there's one satellite, you can see it right there. And the second satellite is actually right here on the, on, on the wing. So essentially we have a receiver right here, a receiver right here, and a receiver all the way in the nose. And they're orthogonal. So you can see the antenna here is sort of that way. The second antenna is kind of right here. Let's see. Second antenna is right there, orthogonal, and similar here. One stroke goes that way, the other one goes that way. And on the uh, midsection, we have one antenna sort of moving back and one antenna sort of going in that direction. So try to, in general, just make sure that there's as much orthogonality as possible on the receiving end. So that's pretty much a sneak preview or rather the whole thing for every, for the folks that wanted to see the internals of how I had built this jet. So we're out in Crow's Landing, beautiful sight, and I just did uh, the flight of the T1F16 and there's a few things I'd like to comment on right now. So the first thing is um, it flies really well. It's got a ton of power as you'll see in the takeoff. 
um, but I realize that there are things I like and things that I don't like. So, number one, I think this plane flies better flapper with flapperons on. Flapper on. So, this is my takeoff flapperon right here, um, and my landing flapperon. Basically, takeoff and landing flapperon are the same. And I am flying this with um, with tailorons. So, my eye, uh, you hit aileron, you can see that my tail moves. And I think I like that, especially with flapperon, because I've had issues in the past where with flapperon, the plane kind of gets lazy on, on the roll axis. And so this way, with tailoron, uh, it flies really good. So I am really liking this amount of flapperon. Um, this flight that I just showed, it took off beautifully. Uh, essentially, I went with my flapperon for takeoff, and that just, it, I mean, it blew my mind away. So I'm still doing some tuning uh, on here. Um, I gotta tune my Smooth Flight 16, which is this guy down here. Um, the gains on the ailerons are a little bit high, so I'm gonna bring those back down. But otherwise, I like this jet. I think that this jet, set up as an EDF, 12S EDF, flies really well, works great. Um, you can see I have my 3D printed missile rails in here. Those seem to be working great. So overall, I'm happy with this plane. I think, I think I'm gonna really enjoy this. Um, and yeah, so keep an eye out for more videos coming out. Um, oh, before I actually end this, I'm gonna show my elevator neutral. So this is sort of right around where my elevator ends up at neutral. Um, and she seems good. So definitely a little bit of that up uh, attitude and in terms of maybe let's see maybe like uh, half a centimeter to 80, 80 millimeters from the bottom of this ledge is where that front surface is but I think I really like this thing I just remembered I wanted to show the bottom of my uh, T1 F16 so obviously there's a cheetah hole in here um, and that's this guy and the reason I added this is when I did static testing in the garage without the cheetah hole, I was pushing about uh, 6.2 kilos at, at, at 49 volts. Um, with the cheetah in place, that went up to about 6.9 kilos. So I know that static thrust is not everything, as most people will like to comment, but I like to make sure that that stuff is good um, and it's an EDF anyways, so that's it and you saw the flight and I didn't really push it so I'm gonna open up the flight envelope